Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. And we got special guest Caleb here. He is one of the fabricators here at Hot Metal Fab. And we are here today to build an I'm Keith bumper. Hot Metal Fab is a sick mod shop. So if you want some custom fabrication work, definitely think about hitting up Hot Metal Fab and they could do some of the work for you. With that said, I'm gonna hand it over to Caleb and he's gonna walk through some of what they specialize in and why you'd actually bring your truck here. We here at Hot Metal Fab can do pretty much anything with metal. Um, we can work on some badass rigs. We've got a 1997 Toyota Land Cruiser with uh, 40 inch tires. It's got a three link in the front using a four wheel underground kit, but we had to build the rear three link kit completely custom. It's got inboard mounted coilovers, fully sheet metal work back in, uh, 40 inch tires, and pretty much everything you can think of is, is done to this rig. Uh, we've got some other cool builds here. We, we can do custom stuff like rock sliders, custom bumpers. You know, you dream it, we can make it. We got a Burning Man truck outside. It's going to be 38 feet tall. It's going to have a kind of a pyramid setup of uh, video screens and a video wall and speakers. It's going to be a, basically a mobile rolling DJ booth. We've got an LS swap, a fully tube chassis buggy sitting over here. I think it's going to be badass and, uh, and so much more. Hot Metal Fab has put together a couple of these I'm Keith bumpers. So they are really knowledgeable on how these things fit together. So if you want to build yourself an I'm Keith bumper for your third gen, this video is going to show you how. I'm Keith makes a lot of awesome goodies for Toyotas, especially third gen 4Runners. Caleb, can you remind us some of all those little goodies that I'm Keith makes? First and foremost, he's got the ever popular Pan Hard Correction Kit, which if you have a lifted third gen 4Runner and you don't have one of these kits, you're missing out. Reach out to I'm Keith, reach out to any one of his resellers, ourselves included, and we can get you set up with the with the PCK for your truck and install it for you if you're not able to do it yourself. Other than that, he's got lower control arm gussets where the lower ball joint receptacle that plugs into the stamped steel of the lower control arm likes to crack if you like to use your foreigner pretty heavily. So he's got gussets to support that. He's got a strut tower top reinforcement kit. So if you like to bomb through the desert and your coilover is starting to push up on that strut tower, that reinforcement plate will stop that from happening. He's got a bunch of goodies for the fourth and fifth gen foreigners, uh, even some land cruisers and a bunch of other goodies for all kinds of Toyotas. So without further ado, we're gonna show you all the components that come with this rear bumper for third gen 4Runner. So let's get started. All right guys, so what we've got going on here is basically almost the full assembly of the Ein Keith bumper. We've got a couple bags of hardware and we'll explain what those are a little bit later on. We've got a hitch. Now with this hitch, what you're gonna have to do is when you actually get it mocked up and installed inside the bumper, you're gonna have to make a mark. We'll show you how to do that a little bit later on. You gotta make a mark because it's gotta be angle cut to uh, clearance the cross member inside. That cross member that fits in the back of the frame rails is this guy right here. This front section facing you right now is gonna be facing the outside back of the truck. This side faces inside, and you'll notice that Keith actually has provisions here for the F-150 fuel tank relocation kit. You don't need to do it right now, but in the future, you will be set up for it. He sells a few different versions of these bumpers. He does have a no body lift version. He's got a one inch body lift version as well. And that's what he generally uh, recommends, the one inch body lift. Gets you a little more clearance around the body for the wings. These wings do sit tight to the body. As with all of Keith's stuff, they are pretty much a perfect fit. The sensor section right here has a provision for a slider step plate. Now these sliders, you're gonna find them off of the earlier Forerunners, the 96 to 98 Forerunners. And on his website, he's got instructions for how to cut the slider step plate to fit into these holes that he has tapped here. These side plates right here, these side radius step vents, they fit neatly uh, around the hatch, around the hatch profile, so everything's a nice tight fit. In the front, we have the recovery point receptacles, we've got the hitch, you have your hooks, we have the side plates that are gonna get bolted on right here. These are the inside hitch support pieces. Now here is where it gets kind of interesting. Now on the inside, you need to weld a couple of nuts and it gets kind of difficult to do these. There's not a whole lot of access with your welding gun, but you don't need to fully weld these nuts. Really the weld is just there to hold the nuts into place while you thread everything in. There's a few other sets of hardware that we'll go over a little bit later on that will help you align the bumper and get it straight and squared, and then we'll go from there. So step one is going to be cutting the exhaust. We're going to cut the exhaust right where you see that mark right there. And we're also gonna cut the exhaust hanger flush to get it out of the way. So next, we're going to be actually setting the cross member into place. Now, the entirety of the I'm Keith bumper actually fits into place without a single weld because of how tight it fits. We'll grab the trusty mallet. We'll give it a little convincing.
Now, what we're looking for here is for these outside edges of the cross member and the outside edge of the existing frame to be flush. You can also take a straight edge and measure across here to make sure that that is the case. As you can see currently, we're a little angled back, which we'll fix with some light taps. And we appear to be correct on this side. So once we know that side's good, we'll come back to this side. Now we're good here. We're gonna double check the other side, which came out of place a little bit. Nice flush fit on both sides. And we are ready to move on. Once we get the cross member into place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these cross member mounting pieces. Now these holes line up with the holes that exist on the cross member, and we'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, just for reference, these are the holes that the recovery points bolt through as well. Now, you'll notice that on the nuts that you need to weld on here that they're coated in a gold plating. This is zinc, and it needs to be ground off before you weld it, otherwise it gets smoky. You may not get good penetration of the weld. They're also Stover nuts, so on three sides of the nut, they're pinched slightly to act as a locking mechanism, much like a nylock or some Loctite. So what we do to make it easier on ourselves is we use some spare nuts. You can use washers or some kind of spacer to get the bolts into place and pull the nut tight without actually engaging those stovers. So we'll get these welded up and then we'll go from there. Before we get these taken care of, we also need to pay attention to these. Now these are the frame shifts that go inside the frame. These actually bolt on exactly where the trailer hitch was if you had one. If you don't have one, you still have the pre-existing holes set up. Now these get the same hardware that the main cross member mounting does as well. And you're going to use the same trick. Just know that you stick the bolt through, you engage the nuts, you use a spacer so you don't have to engage the stover part of the nut and you'll be all set. Now here we're just using a regular Rolock disc to grind these. We don't want to remove material, so we're not going to use an actual sanding disc. So these are just Rolock two inch disc pads. You can find these in pretty much any hardware store, Home Depot, Harbor Freight, pretty much whatever's near you. Now that we have the zinc coating ground off of these nuts, we're actually gonna go ahead and weld these. Now it's kind of difficult to get these set up for yourself, but it doesn't need to be a perfect all the way around weld. All you really need to do is the short section that's facing you and the short section 180 degrees opposite of that on both nuts. Now it helps if you have a tapered tip like this one. Most welders, if you just have a, a home grade, hobbyist grade welder, they're gonna have the standard wider nozzle. We have these tapered tips, that's what we're gonna use. Uh, it doesn't matter, just whatever works for you. Some might call it cheating. I call it, uh, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, but I use this foil shield on my gloves and it's just a you know quick little foil pad. It's, it's pretty thick and it allows me to get pretty much right up and on there when I'm welding. I like to be kind of close to my weld. I like to get my head kind of close just so I can focus on the bead and the arc and everything like that. These gloves by themselves, they're, uh, they're protective enough, but you can see kind of a few burn marks. And if you're doing a long weld, you really don't want to be uh, uncomfortable while you're welding. We call it the ABCs of welding for a reason. Always be comfortable. Now that we've got the main cross member pieces well done, we're gonna to move to the frame strips. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use the same nuts that I was using before to space out the nuts, just so we had dodged the lock part of the Stover nuts on here. Now, these are side specific. So you'll notice this little scoop out right here. This one specifically, this is going to be towards the front of the vehicle. This will be towards the rear. This scoop indicates that this is for the passenger side of the truck. This one, opposingly, it means that it's for the driver's side of the truck. But otherwise, they are exact mirrors of each other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these welded on. And again, we don't need to go all the way around. All we're gonna need to do for welding these is just a small section at six o'clock and a small section at 12 o'clock. We don't need to do the outsides, it's not important. The welds are just here to hold the nuts in place while we thread the bolts in for the final install. So now we're here at one of the more complicated parts of assembling this bumper. 
And the reason for that is we have three pieces that kind of have to get installed all at once. We have the, the main bumper structure support piece that supports the hitch and the outside cross member mounting point. We have the recovery point, which slides in from the front. These two holes line up with these two holes here, right there, just like, yeah. Now, the reason it's complicated is all of them have to go in together at once. And it's kind of annoying to do it, especially if you don't have a second set of hands. What I'll be using is a couple of strong hand magnets that I can turn off and on to turn the magnet off to make it a little easier to slide the metal around. Um, and that way I can work with it myself. So the general process for getting this installed is we're gonna need these two sets of hardware. We need these Stover nuts with these grade 10 or similar uh, bolts that Keith provides. These, we're just gonna quickly assemble them outside of the bumper, just so you guys can get an idea of how it gets set up. So these bolts sit through here. The bolt head faces the inside of the bumper, and then the nuts go on the outside of the bumper. Now, you still have to install the recovery point from the outside in, but this is just to give you guys an idea of how it all gets set up. So first we're gonna slide this into place. Now there's no locating tabs on this, except for this recipient hole. Now this recipient hole is going to receive this tab right here. So first we're just gonna lightly set this into place, just like so. We're gonna take the recovery point, we're gonna slide it in from the front, just like that. We're gonna take one of the bolts, set it into place, and it may take some wiggling, especially for working by yourself to actually get this into place. Once we've got one bolt in, we're gonna put the second one in. Everything here is a tight fit as with all of Keith's stuff. There we go. Now we don't really need to put the nuts on, not all the way yet, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, put them on there anyways, just so if we happen to need to move the bumper around, this all stays assembled. But we wanna make sure everything still stays, still stays nice and loose so we can work with it a little bit later on. Then we're gonna take the inner hitch support piece, just slide it into place. Now these locator tabs right here align with the three on top of the bumper. Now keep in mind that this one is unlike these two in that it's an open open face. This tab still lines up with it. Uh, other thing you can use to orient yourself is a slight little radius cut right here. Now this is gonna fit around the hitch once the hitch actually gets installed. Otherwise it's pretty obvious where these go. This hole right here, helps you put your chains if you're putting chains in the front of the bumper if you intend to tow anything. Otherwise, this tab right here, along with these three, this tab right here lines up with this. These tabs line up at the top here. So there's no mistaking putting this uh, cross member support piece exactly where it goes. Although it will be a tight fit. So to make it a little bit easier on yourself in case the fitment's a little tight, we're gonna give this section that butts up against the cross member, just a light grind. And I do mean very, very, very light. We could fit it in as it is, but just to save yourself a little bit of time, we're gonna give it a quick grind. Now, you should witness this piece sliding in a lot easier than if we hadn't ground that down. Just like that. Now, once it's in general position, set it into place. So you have, looks like I have this one lined up. So now I'm gonna worry about the ones on the top. If they take a light tap with a hammer to get them fully set into place, you'll get a nice satisfying click once they're in place. And you'll know because I'm click, moving it back and forth and there's just enough play, but I also know that it's not going anywhere. I can let go and it's actually good. So next step that I'm gonna do is make sure that this is lined up. Set this up right here with the magnet to make sure it doesn't move. I'm not gonna tack weld anything just yet. This entire bumper assembles without a single tack weld. I'm going to grab the other side and do the exact same thing.
now that we have both sides in and we have magnets holding them in place, we're gonna quickly verify here, here, and here, and the same three on the other side, that everything's lined up, just to make sure everything's good. The ones on the side here, not terribly important yet, not really at least, and the reason for that is because we have yet to tighten the bolts that hold the recovery points into place. Once we get the hitch into place, we'll actually be able to use some clamps and then we'll start placing some tack welds to actually start holding this stuff together. So far, we still don't need to do any tack welding. Next step, we're going to actually insert the hitch, make sure that the hole is horizontal with the bumper because you can't be putting your, um, your hitch pin in vertically with the way the bumper's set up. We're gonna slide this in just like yay, looking towards the front to make sure it's flush with everything. Then we're going to mark a quick cut line just right there. Then we'll take this over the bandsaw, get this cut, install the hitch, and continue building. We're going to cheat here and we're going to use my nice fancy bandsaw. It's all water cooled. I can set the angle and degrees and like that. But you can actually use an angle grinder to get this, uh, this part done. You basically just need to make a 45 degree cut along the mark that we just made on the bumper. This isn't super, super critical as long as you have enough meat left over on the hitch to actually weld it. But here, since I have it, I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna get this clamp down, tighten that. We're gonna let this run. Shut itself off. Then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the auto drop off. Here's it back up and out of the way. Get our drop out. So now that we have the hitch angle cut, we're gonna go ahead and verify the fitment, sliding it in through here. Now, depending on where you marked it, you're gonna get a couple of different joints. One, you're gonna get an outside or inside corner joint, rather, or like I did, more of a flush fit. And it's just, it just makes for a cleaner weld overall. We're gonna go ahead and bring this set back out for now. We will put it back in and get it all tack welded. But right now we're gonna set this in. Now this is the main hitch support piece. This also has two of the locator tabs that slide into receiver tabs on the main hitch support pieces or the main bumper support pieces that we've just, just installed. These pretty easily and simple slide into place. And that's it. There is no mistaking where this goes. It, as long as it's lined up here, with the main hitch outline, you're good to go. This hitch can go back in, and then we'll get started done welding it all. Now that we have everything assembled, except for the hitch, which we're gonna leave out for now, we're gonna start tack welding stuff. Now, we should tack in smart and strategic spots along the bumper. So what I'm gonna do is basically, I'm gonna make a quick, small tack weld. Basically every spot, there's a locator tab and doing so will make it still easy to cut off if I need to adjust anything in the future, but it'll make sure that those locator tabs stay in position at all times. The reason this is critical is everything else for the bumper, including the side wings, bolting onto the cross member, they rely on everything being located correctly. If we're even a little bit off, you'll just find yourself fighting installing the bumper. So again, we're going to what we're gonna tack weld every locator tab on the top section. We're gonna leave this one for now. We have we still have yet to uh, bolt these down. We're gonna leave everything loose for now, and you'll see why a little bit later on. Along with the ones on the top, we're gonna go inside of the bumper, and there are small little reliefs and clearances inside of the bumper where we're gonna tack weld. Now, there's no locator holes, because that's the front face of the bumper, and it would look kind of ugly if there were locator holes in the front of it. You'd have to weld them and grind them and buff them. So we're just gonna quickly weld on the inside. Now, you can try to weld inside here if you want to, if it's set up that way on your table or however you have the bumper set up. If you don't have a tapered nozzle for your welder, it's gonna be really hard to reach in there and it's, and it's not very important. You can reach just fine using these access windows here, 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 and out through the rest of the bumper to get tack welds all throughout the top to get these locked into place before we move on to the next step. Now that we have the hitch and cross member support pieces all tack welded in. Keep in mind, we still have these loose. We'll get to tightening those a little bit later. But right now, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to install this temporarily on the cross member that is already on the truck. And the reason we're doing this is because what we're gonna do next is actually bolt on the side wings. 
we're going to need to drill a couple of holes, which we'll explain here in a little bit, but we just wanna make sure everything lines up first before we do too much more welding. And again, the reason we just tack welded it is so if something does need a small adjustment, we'd actually just quickly cut that tack weld off, make the adjustment, use a clamp, use a hammer, use a little pry bar, get it into place. For the most part, it clicks into place, but if you've been wheeling and off-roading with your truck and you might've tagged the hitch or you might've you know, maybe you have some frame damage from a previous accident or whatever. We might need to make small adjustments here and there, but it really shouldn't be too bad. Now that we have the bumper temporarily installed, and there's no, there's, all we have is just a jack holding the bumper on, just to make sure it's level with the back of the truck. And we've got some temporary bolts, but they're not tight. All they're there is just to make sure if, if the bumper does decide to go cattywampus on us, it doesn't fall on us. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set these side wings up. Now, there's a couple things to pay attention to. We have this setup, which actually bolts to the side of the frame, but we have yet to actually modify the frame to account for those. We'll get to that a little bit later on. All we're going to do is make sure that this part of the bumper lines up with the face of the bumper. We'll make any adjustments we need to make, and then we'll go from there. Before we do that though, one of the things I wanted to mention is that we have a pre-drilled hole and a couple of locating tabs for us right on the front here. Now, these are for the Baja Designs lights, the actual part number of which can be found on Keith's website. You can choose to close these up if you want. You just find a little circle, weld it in. I say leave it in there. You can probably find some type of light pod from Amazon if you're not feeling too spendy for the Baja Designs one, but that's what these are for. Before we put the side wings on the truck, there's a couple things we need to do. We need to cut the pinch weld down here. Now there's about three pieces of sheet metal that kind of meet all together. They get squished together by some Toyota machine at the factory. But we need to cut a little bit off of that pinch weld. We're gonna round this corner off, make it a nice clean corner. And then you'll see a seam that goes all the way down the length of this quarter panel right here. So basically we're gonna follow that seam and cut that all the way down. That way the side wings they go, when they go straight up, there's no interference here. The other thing that we need to do is we need to cut this section right here off to allow for the front section of the wing to actually fit on. And we'll get to that a little bit later on. One of the more important things to know with the body modification is that the driver's side is actually different than the passenger side. You do need to get rid of this little grommet. Just take it out real quick. We will be putting it back in. We'll just set it aside for now. If you're not so handy with a grinder without, you know, if you don't have surgeon surgical precision, go ahead and remove this, get it out of the way. You can unclip this wire however you wanna. And then we're gonna cut along this same seam that we did on the other side. So this is gonna look something like that. So we're gonna round that off. We'll take this. We kind of ignore most of this part since the seam doesn't come all the way on this side because of the pressure vent. But otherwise, we're still gonna take this seam all the way down to the very end of the body. We're just gonna tuck that up and in there for now. And then we can make our cuts. So once we have this cut, we're gonna take a little flap disc and we're gonna clean those cuts up, make sure there's no sharp edges. We're gonna round off that sharp corner right there tuck this little body seam up a little bit more and just make sure it looks nice and clean. You're not gonna see it when the bumpers are on or anything, but still just have a little bit of pride in your work, make it nice and clean. We're actually gonna go ahead and paint it as well, just so the fresh exposed metal that we just ground down doesn't start rusting underneath the bumper where you can't see it until it's a big problem later on. So in continuing with the body modifications required to get the side wings on this bumper to fit, there's a couple of additional cuts that we need to make. Uh, first we're gonna make a couple of different marks. One of those marks is gonna be at the top here. And to get that mark, we're gonna measure from the inside of the sheet metal flange right here. We're gonna measure two inches towards the rear of the truck. We're gonna make a quick mark there. Then we're, from that same location, we're gonna measure five inches back, make a mark there. Now you'll know you're correct when the mark that you've made here that's five inches back is just behind this rear bolt hole. Now what we're gonna do is take our straight edge of any kind. Here, I'm just using a square. We're gonna draw a line straight down from that five inches mark. We have that. Then from that mark we made earlier, the two inch mark that we made up here, we're going to draw a 45 degree mark 
from that mark to the very bottom of the sheet metal here. It is this line that we will be following to make that body line cut. Now, once you're here in your cut and the body folds under, basically you just continue that cut straight all the way in and then down. So again, we're not cutting this. This is just our reference mark. But this line right here is the one that we'll be cutting. Remember, the driver's side is actually different than the passenger side. The measurements are very similar. So the, the measurement that is the same is actually that two inch measurement that we're gonna take from the edge of the sheet metal here. Once again, just as we did on the other side. So we'll make that quick mark right here. However, you, you don't need to go that far on this side. This side's actually already a little bit further back than the other side. That's just due to the way Toyota designed it. Who knows actually why? So instead of the five inch back mark, all we need to do is cut off four and a half inches off of this side. So using that same measurement spot that we did for the two inch mark, we're just gonna mark our four and a half inch mark, kind of deepen that line right there. Take our straight edge, exact same way we did the other side. Go straight down with that. Then from the two inch mark, down to the very bottom of the outer sheet metal, Make our angled cut. And then for the bottom side, just continue it all the way in and down. We'll get all that cleaned up once uh, all the straight cuts are done. So in short, the driver's side from the edge of the sheet metal to the back cut straight mark, your reference mark is four and a half inches, but on the passenger side, it is five inches. Now that we have these bolts in place, they're not fully tight. You can see there's a, there's a little bit of wiggle going on here, but I really want to highlight the importance of this gap right here. This gap right here is important because there's a side plate that gets welded on to the side of the frame right here that the two bolt holes on the outside of this wing plate bolt onto. So it's very important to know that this doesn't go all the way up against the frame. It's pretty easy to make that mistake. Your alignment mark is going to be following this edge of the material and it should be pretty well in line with the seam on the frame. It should be pretty obvious to figure it out. You may need a pry bar to help push the wing out in place, but once you run your finger along it, or you can even just go visually, you'll know you're in the right spot. Now, there's a hole right here that you can also visually use to make sure that you're aligned with the extra bolt hole that needs to be there. So for these side plates, basically what we're gonna do is we need to take this, this hole right here, this hole right here, and align them with this hole here and this hole here. Now you can do this just visually, you can use a magnet, you can use a clamp, but visually, close counts for now. We'll quickly set that into place. Then we're going to mark the outside outline of this. Go ahead and get that good. And the reason we're doing this is because this side plate actually gets welded on. But what we need to do first is remove the side wing. Then we'll drill a couple of holes so that when we put this back on with what nuts welded on the back side of it, the nuts will be able to fit inside the holes inside the frame. So before we take the cross member off, we need to mark out a couple of spots in preparation for welding the cross member actually to the end of the frame here. Now, there's a couple of important things to keep in mind when we're actually welding this on. We don't want to weld anywhere on the inside. And the reason for that is when we actually go to put the bumper on, those welds may interfere with the actual fitment, especially if you need to shift the bumper side to side to actually get it on. Where we are going to weld first is going to be here, this line right here. Then we're going to weld the underside 
of this seam right here. We're also gonna weld on the top here, right around there. We're also gonna drill a couple of holes in the frame here and here. Now, if you wanted to do a third one, you could do it in the center. I find it unnecessary. As long as you have these two plug welds with a good size hole, we'll call it a half inch hole is what we'll drill to weld the inside of the cross member to the outside of the frame, you'll be solid. So here we've got some pre-marked spots for where we're going to be drilling the plug weld holes for the cross member. Now it's important to know that it's not really important exactly where these go because they're not bolt hole locations. If they were, yeah, we'd be a little bit more precise, but we can still locate these. And if you want to use these as guidelines, you can. Otherwise the measurements are arbitrary. So basically what I've got going on here is both of these are located five eighths of an inch in from the outside edge right here. And this bottom one is one inch from this bottom flange. The top one is one inch down from that top flange right there. So we're gonna go ahead and take my hole starter, start that hole there, start that hole there. I'm gonna punch it a couple more times just to make sure I've got those holes started. So that way when I start my drill on it, the drill doesn't walk and the holes are accurate. So in this case, I'm gonna be using a step bit here and I'm gonna drill it up to five eighths of an inch. That number's kind of arbitrary. Just do anywhere between three eighths of an inch to five eighths of an inch, depending on your weld seal level. One of the most important parts of setting this bumper up is going to be these frame strips. Now, remember earlier in the video, what we did is we welded the nuts to this frame strip. What we need to do now is actually drill holes in the bottom of the frame and actually plug weld the frame strip in place. If we don't do that, this just ends up all kinds of loose and we don't really want that to happen. So where we're gonna plug weld is going to be one inch from the approximate center of these bolts. Now, it's, it's just an arbitrary number, again, not super important, just like the plug welds on the outside of the frame for the cross member, but we'll be kind of close here, as close as possible, and the reason for that is because the there is a little relief clearance cut on these frame strips. You can see here, there's a passenger side, this strip right here is the driver's side. You can see there's a little clearance strip to dodge a pre-existing tab that's inside the frame. Now, approximately, you can see just about where it's at. So the one inch mark from the center of those bolt holes is really just there to make sure that you don't plug weld over this relief because you just won't get enough weld purchase on it. So a proc will be right here or so and right around there. We're gonna go ahead and take the bolts out, drill those, reinstall the nut strip and weld it on. Before we actually finally weld these in, we're gonna quickly spray some weld through primer. You can already see a couple of spots I've already got it. You can't really access this anymore once it's actually in the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it now. You can get these, this initial tongue uh, before you put the cross member in. So we don't need to worry about that if you wanna put it in while the primer is drying out. But make sure you leave the spots where your plug welds are gonna be dry of the primer. And once they're welded on, we'll go ahead and get some spray paint up and in there anyways. Uh, just to make sure things don't rust down in the future. Now that we have the holes drilled for the nut strips, we've also got it tight. These bolts aren't just snug, they're tight, tight. And the reason for that is so we can pull the nut strip all the way down. That way when we plug weld these, it doesn't move and it'll stay straight and square for the rest of the install of the bumper. Now, the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna weld these nuts on the inside. Now, these are for bolting the bottom of the bumper to the bottom of the cross member here. Uh, you could also add a skid plate if you wanted if you get the F-150 tank in there, but much like the frame nut strips and the actual main cross member brackets, we're going to use a spacer to set these up. These nuts are also the Stover type where they're pinched, and we don't wanna engage that yet. We just wanna quickly set it up so you can see I've got my nut here acting as a spacer 
So we're gonna weld these on and then we'll get the cross member installed and we'll continue from there. Before we actually put the cross member on, we're gonna quickly spray some weld through primer on the inside just to get any rust spots or any of the burrs from the drilling before and uh, just to make sure that the frame doesn't rust from the inside out. So before we actually fully install this onto the truck and get it welded on everything, we're gonna spray the back as well, just to make sure that no rust happens, no surprise rust happens. We can leave the front side undone. That's not really important because we can get that when it's all said and done, but we at least wanna get the back side sprayed with some uh, paint and primer just to make sure that there's no problems in the future. Now that we have the nut strip welded on, the other thing that we need to do is prepare the frame for the side plates. So remember we made the mark a little bit earlier. We're gonna finish off that mark now that the side wing uh, parts of the bumper aren't actually on there. To do this, you're gonna use this bolt on the forward hole that the nut strip provides you to locate this bracket. Then mark your holes here and here. Now remember, there's actually a pre-existing hole in the frame. You can't use that hole. You still need to enlarge it, but still kind of mark it where you can just so you get an idea of where it needs to go. Then we'll finish marking the outline, just like yay. And this outline will help tell us where we need to weld this on. Remember, this does get welded on. The only bolt that holds this on is actually this one right here, and that's just not enough. So at the very least, you wanna weld this vertical and this vertical. If you don't wanna weld these, you don't have to. It's not really all that important, um, but if you wanna be complete about it, maybe challenge yourself a little bit of a, kind of a covered welding, kind of a difficult spot to get to, you absolutely can. At the very least, go ahead and get this vertical, this vertical welded on, and that'll be totally sufficient for getting these side plates taken care of. Now, there's a couple different ways you can actually get this section cut out. And remember, the side plates that go on here, they're gonna have nuts welded onto the back side, and they need to fit into the frame. You can see about where we marked earlier in the previous segment, where those nuts need to go. Now, I have access to a plasma cutter here at the shop. I realize that not everyone does. Not a big problem. All you need to do is mark where this hole is, drill it, enlarge it, and you'll be able to fit that nut in there. This one, since the hole is kind of already pre-existing, all you need to do is grind it out a little bit until that nut fits. Now just go slow. You don't need to worry about making the hole too big. Uh, just keep going until the, until the plate fits snug and completely flush against the back of the frame, and then get it welded on. This hole that we were talking about earlier, whether you drilled it out or, and enlarged the holes or you cut out a big window like this, remember that it's for these nuts that we got welded onto the back side of these plates. Now, uh, this window will allow you to get these nuts in and behind the frame as opposed to having the nuts stick out and it would just make the bumper all ugly and more complicated than it needs to be. To locate these holes, Remember that nut strip, that frame, that super long nut strip that we welded together earlier and then we plug welded to the frame? Well, the rearmost hole for that is what you're gonna use to locate these side plates. If everything's correct and you have your locator tabs, both your mail and your recipient tabs, everything should line up perfectly as intended. If it doesn't, you've done something wrong, I should probably skip back in the video some to figure out where you went wrong, but everything should fit as long as everything's straight, square, and you measured and you marked and everything's good to go. For now, we're gonna get these side plates on. We're gonna do those two verticals. And remember, you don't have to do these top ones if you don't want to. You can, not necessary. But once we get this bolt on, we're gonna set a C-clamp up here to keep this nice and tight to the frame while we weld it. And most importantly, while it cools, make sure that C-clamp stays on there until it's completely cool to the touch. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and re-temporarily install the bumper, the center section, both side wings. We'll tack everything together, then we'll pull it off, set it on the table, and do all the finished welding. So one of the better tips or tricks that I have for you guys is actually using a ratchet strap to pull the two main cross member forward support pieces together. Now at this point, remember, we don't even have these tacked on. The bolts aren't even tight. The bolts that connected to the recovery point and to the main bumper, they're not tight. There's no tacks. There's nothing holding this together except for the way they tab and slot together. Now, the reason for this is so that if we needed to make any change, which so far we haven't needed to make any change, but if we did need to, we'd be able to make that change very easily. To recap, 
The only spots that we have tacked are each of the tab and receiver slots for the main bumper center support section that supports the hitch. The hitch itself is still out. We'll get that in here in a moment. There are also some tacks on the inside of the bumper, just in three separate spots, just to keep everything nice and loose. As long as we know that the tabs are together, which they are, we'll squeeze everything together and we'll get it clamped down to the table to make sure everything's still nice and tight. And we'll go ahead and tack these in place and we'll move on to actually final mock-up installing of the bumper. Now, one thing I like to do when test fitting the bumper is the front holes that these bolts go through on the cross member, I like to open them up just a little bit. Keith has these holes and everything set up for such a tight tolerance. If your frame's a little bit tweaked, um, like you got into an accident, you off road really hard and you tag it really hard, sometimes the holes might just need a little bit love with a, a small drum sander to open them up just a little bit, just to be able to get these bolts in a little bit easier. But otherwise, super easy to install. They mostly thread in by hand until you reach the pinched or stover part of the nut, if you remember how we talked about that near the beginning of the video. But otherwise, go ahead and cinch them down pretty much all the way. That way we make sure the center section is exactly where it's going to land. Then after this, after we get all these bolts tight, we're going to install the side sections, make sure that everything lines up straight and square. We'll put some tack welds on it. We'll pull it back off and set it on the table and do all the final welds. So one of the last things we need to do to get this bumper ready is get these side wing support pieces in. Now, you could do this before or after the side wings are actually welded onto the bumper. Right here, everything is unwelded just for demonstration purposes. So we're gonna go ahead and use the locator tab on the bumper bracket, just like everything else on the bumper. Tabs right into an existing slot on the side wing. We're gonna use this locator bracket on the back side of the main bracket, click that into place, use a magnet to hold it all together and get it all welded out. Now that we have the center section bolted up and the side wings bolted up, including with the side support plates, we're going to start tacking the bumper in a few different spots. And what we're gonna do is make sure that it's tacked good enough to be able to pull it off the truck and weld it on the table. Now, we are gonna do a few of the welds on the truck, and this is just so it holds it really good. Sometimes even tacks just aren't enough, especially with how heavy this bumper is. Um, maneuvering it by yourself can be kind of difficult. If you have a buddy, it works out a little bit easier. So we're gonna tack basically on every single corner on the joints that are available. And then we'll do a couple of welds. Not sure which welds we'll do yet. Uh, we'll kind of decide here in a little bit, but more than likely we'll do this long radius weld right there. We might do this outside corner here underneath the brake light and maybe the downhill vertical right there as well. And then after all that's done and I'm happy with it, we're gonna go ahead and pull it off, set it on the bench and we're gonna weld everything on the inside and get this ready for final install. Those are going on Instagram. Oh yeah. Now that we've got most of this outer section connecting the center section to the side wing welded out, the next step that we're gonna do is actually gonna pull it off using all of the bolts that we use to locate everything and install it, take it to the bench and finish welding it. Now, as far as filling the body back in goes, the remaining hole that's left over after you've cut it, trace that onto some cardboard paper and a marker and then transfer that to some 20 gauge, 18, 16, whatever gauge, whatever sheet metal you have available to you and cut that out. Now, on the body, all around the seams, make sure it's clean, bright, shiny metal and it'll give you the best chance of getting good penetration. As far as welding it, 
go ahead and use a series of tacks. You're probably not gonna be able to use a straight bead like you would if you were like you were welding onto the bumper, but just a series of tacks, and that should get you hot enough to, to penetrate the metal and to make sure everything stays stuck together. We don't really don't want any moisture or water or anything getting inside of the body. So use some automotive grade seam sealer available at your favorite auto parts store. Use that, let it dry, paint over it, and then you'll be able to put the bumper back over the body that you've cut. So you can see that most of the inside of the bumper is welded out. One of the things I want to bring to your attention is actually how short some of these welds are. You don't need to do full lengths. In fact, I suggest not doing that. And the reason for that is the, the material will actually start to warp. As the weld bead cools, it actually shrinks. It shrinks a little bit smaller. So if you have a little bit of a gap, yeah, maybe it'll be okay. But with how tight all of these fit, you shouldn't have a gap at all. So we're just doing short little welds, just calculated, pre-measured. You can do full length welds for the hitch. That's pretty important. If you want to be able to tow stuff or pull stuff, put your bike rack on there, whatever. Yeah, go ahead and do full welds there. But even for the cross member support pieces, everything is clicked together and so tight together, it's really not important. So I just got a short little weld right there. I'm not going full length all the way down into the bottom. There's, there's really no need. Now down here, this is where earlier in the video, I mentioned that you might be able to weld down in there if you had a tapered nozzle. However, from the top and on the inside of the front face of the bumper, which we'll show here in a little bit, you'll actually be able to get plenty of, plenty of weld access from there. However, you can weld the inside if you'd like. It's not necessary. I would do one or the other. I probably wouldn't do both unless you're just feeling weld happy. If you do that, just make sure everything's nice and cool first. Otherwise you risk warping the bumper and you're gonna have a hell of a time getting it back on. So, now that we've got the torch going, we're gonna go ahead and preheat these recovery points since they're so thick and the base metal of the bumper is not as thick. We're gonna make sure that these recovery points are gonna be wetted in when we go to weld it. So we're gonna use the temp gun, we're gonna make sure that the recovery points get to about 450 to 500 degrees before we weld them. So I just wanted to recap real quick with uh, a couple of things on the bumper. Now it's fully welded and I wanted to reiterate how important it is to basically not fully weld this bumper. There's a few kind of important welds, especially the outside ones. Now at this point, you can choose to grind down the welds and make it look like it was seamless and like there was never a break or a joint or a fillet there. Or you can leave them as is if you like, like the look of uh, clean bare welds or you think you want to paint it up and see how the welds look after it's all painted. You can absolutely do that. Remember that we heated up the recovery points. We let those cool off entirely. We didn't weld this top section. It's not really necessary. Remember that the recovery points bolted entirely inside to the main cross member section. So it's, it's super, super strong as it is. Uh, before you put it on, if you plan on painting it while it's on the truck, don't forget to get some kind of primer on the inside. That way it doesn't rust especially on the back sides of everywhere you welded. Now, everywhere you welded, the metal there is super sensitive to rust. It's basically super heated, super hot, and basically it's really pure. You've cooked all the gases out of the material, so there's nothing there protecting. There's no oils, there's no, um, and there's nothing, there's nothing there protecting those welds from, from rust. Now, even if you live on the Western side of the United States or even in a drier climate, you should still be concerned with uh, not getting these, not letting your bumper get rusty. Just take some, take some pride in your work and get, get it primed everywhere. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna get the bumper installed finally, do our last fitments. We've got the body closed up after we cut everything. We've got it painted, it's prepped, it's primered, it's ready to go. We'll get some bolts in and we'll get this all done. It's not light, that's for sure. Oh, you, uh... <laughs> Can I what, get behind? <laughs> no, no, no. Speak, okay, speak. Okay, what do you want? Good. You guys, you need to bring yours up, Caleb. There you go. We're in. Sean, you should be able to let go. It should be holding itself pretty good right now. Uh, you're holding it right back. We're gonna go left or right? I twist it so he can get the... I got one in. Okay. All right, we're all done with this job. And as you can see, we got everything all bolted up and we're ready to hit the trails. 
The last thing you'd want to do with this bumper is, of course, get it painted up, protect it against rust. One thing you might consider is against powder coating it because some of these tolerances are going to get even tighter. So maybe just some rattle can and uh, take your time. And then if it gets scratched up, you can just touch it up. So that would be our suggestion. Now that the bumper is finally installed, there's a couple things to note. Make sure your hatch clears. After you install and weld the bumper, stuff might have moved. It doesn't matter how slow you took the welding, just metal moves when, when you weld it. So make sure your hatch clears all the way around. This line is really tight. It's a super nice fitment. Once you get your slider step plate all cut up, all the instructions are on Imkey's website at imkey.com. Once you get all that and it plugs into place, don't forget that if you ever need to put your hitch pin in, into place, that step plate's gonna need to come off. Your chains for the trailer or whatever you're attaching go in through here. Your Baja Designs light mounts are gonna go through here. Now remember, these two are just pilot holes. All you, you still need to up drill those. The recovery points, they take a soft shackle or a regular D-ring. Now, Keith recently released the swing out hinges. Now, if you had that part, you have pre-drilled holes on the bumper to help you align that. Everything will be pretty self-explanatory for the hinge, and maybe you'll see a video from us on that here in the future. So with all that said, we want to thank the guys here at Hot Metal Fab, especially Caleb. He's an expert installer on the I'm Keith bumper. So if you want to install yours and you want them to build it for you, these are definitely your guys. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. And of course, sick mods. We got one more thing we gotta do, bro. What, what bro do, what bro thing do we do, gotta be doing? This is the last final touch here. Yeah, the Sean bumper. <laughs> there it is there. All right, thanks a lot, Caleb. Absolutely.